Take a look at this image. This is the Pillars of Creation, one of the most famous images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, this image is not shot in true colour. I'm an astrophotographer and I can take images of the same targets to reveal what they might look like to our own eyes. This is a picture of the same target taken by the Kitt Peak Observatory. As you can see, this image does not appear the same colour as Hubble's image. In fact, the same colour appears throughout most of my own images of nebulae, glowing in this deep red colour. In this video, we'll tackle two questions. Where does this deep red colour come from? And why don't Hubble's images look the same? Well, the answers lie in a process called electron excitation. Let's take a hydrogen atom. This is simply just an electron orbiting a single proton. This circle represents a shell. This can be thought of as the orbit the electron follows. If the electron were to orbit in this second shell, further from the nucleus, it would have a greater potential energy. So what exactly is potential energy? We describe potential energy as an energy store based on your position. Let's take an example, like cycling up a hill. As the cyclist attempts to cycle up this steep hill, he needs to put in lots of energy by pedaling against the force of gravity to gain elevation. So where does this energy go? Energy gets transferred to his stored potential energy. We can see this potential energy in action when he cycles down this hill. Now he won't need to pedal as gravity is doing the work, converting his potential energy into speed or kinetic energy. So how does cycling down a hill and electrons orbiting atoms relate to red glowing nebulae in space? To better understand this concept, we can add a few more shells and simplify our hydrogen atom into an energy level diagram these straight lines represent the different shells. Each shell has a distinct amount of energy. This bottom line represents our first shell, and each line above is the next consecutive shell. We can think of the energy levels as positions on the hill, so at this level we can think of the electron being further up the hill, having more potential energy. Inside the nebula, an ultraviolet photon will be emitted from a neighbouring star. This photon will hit the electron inside the first shell, if the photon has the exact amount of energy between the two levels, it will excite the electron, kind of giving it a kick into a higher orbit. Now, an excited electron is less stable and will spontaneously de-excite, falling back down to its original ground state. As it falls, it will lose 10.2 electron volts of potential energy. This potential energy will be transferred to energy in the form of light, so the electron will release a photon with the exact energy it loses an ultraviolet photon of wavelength 122 nanometers. But this isn't the full picture. We're looking for a distinct red light, what astrophotographers call hydrogen alpha. This type of light is caused when an electron falls from the third shell to the second shell. To produce red light, the electron needs to jump from the first to the third shell, which requires more energy. So we need a higher energy X-ray photon the photon will interact with the electron causing it to excite to our third shell. The electron could take any of these paths as it de-excites. To produce the deep red hydrogen alpha, it takes this route with a much smaller difference in energy of 1.89 electron volts. The electron spontaneously de-excites and transfers 1.89 electron volts of energy to light by producing a red photon of 656 nanometers wavelength. We call this specific color of light hydrogen alpha. Now, keep in mind, every time this interaction happens where an electron falls from the third to the second orbital, it always loses the same amount of energy, so the light released is the exact same colour every time. This fact comes from the idea that energy is quantized. This was first proposed by Max Planck in 1900. This means that energy at such a tiny scale is only transferred in discrete units called quanta. This eventually laid down the foundation for what's known as quantum mechanics. Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist, then proposed that electrons in atoms orbit in specific quantized energy levels rather than a continuous range of energies. After, the electron will also de-excite from the second to the first shell, releasing the ultraviolet photon we discussed earlier. This is because the electron will always want to get back down to ground state, which is the most stable. In short, X-ray light is emitted from neighbouring stars and excites an electron in a hydrogen atom causing it to move up to the third shell. It then de-excites from the third to the second shell, 
releasing the hydrogen alpha photon. As hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, this explains why we observe this colour so often in our images. Now that we've answered the first question, we can use this concept to answer the second. Why don't Hubble's images represent true colour? The Hubble Space Telescope uses a technique called narrowband imaging, using a monochrome camera. Now, this isn't due to Hubble being outdated. In fact, most astrophotographers use monochrome cameras over colour cameras when taking images of space. Monochrome cameras are far more sensitive to light and allows Hubble to take images of various different types of light, such as infrared or ultraviolet, depending on whatever filter they put in front of the camera. Monochrome cameras work by taking three separate images, one in red, one in green and one in blue, and combining them to create a full colour image. Narrowband imaging is how Hubble takes advantage of the effects of electron excitation by using filters that only let in light of specific wavelengths that come from electron excitations in nebulae. This is unlike broadband imaging that uses red, green and blue filters to let in a broad spectrum of colours. Using a narrowband filter allows Hubble to cut straight through to the light emitted by nebulae in space, revealing its complex gas formations. But this doesn't only help Hubble. Amateur astrophotographers can also use narrowband filters. Because all the nebulae in the sky emit very specific colours of light, using these filters will cut out almost all of the light emitted by streetlights, but all the light from nebulae can pass straight through. The Pillars of Creation uses something called the Hubble Palette, or SHO, using three different emissions, sulfur 2, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen 3. These colours all come from electron excitations in different elements, so they all produce specific wavelengths just like hydrogen does. With narrowband imaging, Hubble takes three separate images in three different wavelengths. One in sulfur 2, one in hydrogen alpha, and one in oxygen 3. Then on a computer, a scientist will combine the images to form a full colour image, mapping sulfur 2 to red, hydrogen alpha to green, and oxygen 3 to blue. This technique will create a false colour image, revealing the crisp details of the formations of new stars, understanding how the solar system came to be and what it will become. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like down below. If you like videos about physics and astronomy, please subscribe for more.